ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to uh, my second interview of the day. I decided to change my shirt for some reason. I don't know. I'm rocking a Willow shirt. You know what I mean? This is the pre-AEW Willow shirt. You know, we like to support here. Uh, before we get anything, uh, let us know in the comments what you think about the pre how the show has been going. If you would like to be a part of the show, link tree for me and my guests are all below. You can sign up to become a guest on the show. Uh, it's not just wrestling. I'll talk to anybody. But there's going to be a lot of pro wrestling content here. Um, also, I've been asking for reviews uh, that I like to read off before the show starts. Uh, I don't have any reviews on the audio side yet. So if you do check out this podcast, ABJ podcast on all audio platforms, uh, if it has an option to leave a review, do so. If you're just here on YouTube, just leave a review on the comment section. Just write review and then write out what you want to say and I'll read it off next episode. But we do have some on uh, Facebook, so I'd like to uh, read some here. And this one's great because it comes from the GOAT himself, Peter DeLong. Well-informed, gifted talker, asset to anyone in need of his services. Also, very handsome. Love that. Uh, Alex Barbario says, Alex, Anthony Blackwell has changed my life. ABJ is one of the absolute best in commentary field. ABJ taught me how to be a man. ABJ is a really good dude. And I mean, who doesn't love ABJ? So there you go. We got some reviews over on the Facebook side. Keep them coming. I, I, I really, really enjoy the support. Um, Without further ado, I want to bring in my guest. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself. But I, I want to say, that this is kind of funny, but the longest reigning Shore Star champion, the most defending Shore Star champion, Vinny Chenzo. What's going on, my guy? Ah, what's up, man? No doubt, right? I mean, Morty, we are. We are the longest reigning. I mean, it, it's definitely free bird rules with me and Morty. But heck yeah, dude. It's so glad to be here, man. Thank you so much. I'm very excited. Morty's getting to hang out on the podcast here today. That's That's yeah, super dude. exciting. Yeah, dude, oh. Morty, Morty's always on in tow with me wherever we go. Now, that's kind of where I wanted to start because that's what caught my eye with you when you first came out. So I, I really kind of just in the past couple months broke into the New Jersey scene. I knew nothing about it. I didn't know any talent. I didn't really know much of anything. I see here bits in here, here and there uh, and, and huge shout out and love to Chad uh, who who brought me aboard because of Pete DeLong and he brought me into shore star, which was like a brand new company starting out. And they said they wanted a brand new commentary team and Pete put my name in there. So I kind of got to head up a new company as their commentary team, which was really exciting. And you came in and won the championship, the very first show. And you came out with uh, my pet monster, which is Morty. And uh, I remember as a kid, I had one of those. If you look up my pet monsters now on eBay, they are very expensive. Oh, heck yeah, dude. Very much so. I, I believe the last time I checked the price tag, they go for like, what, four for used? Yeah, Something four like or that. five. And if you have the ones with chains, and I think there's one with a football helmet. Oh, uh, yeah, the, uh, like the the, tw the twin brother. On, I, I can't remember all the names of the other characters on this show, but like that was like the brother, yeah. Yeah, they are really exp – I had a pet monster, and I had a couch potato. Remember the couch potatoes? Oh, my God, yes, dude. I yeah. totally forgot about couch potatoes until now. Holy crap. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what made you uh, start bringing Morty along? How did you find him? How did you acquire him? Is he something you've had since you're a kid and brought him along? Did you go seek him out? Uh, all right. So, I mean, realistically, we're going to, you know, cater between the lines of kayfabe and back and forth here. Yeah. Cause, uh, wrestling fans aren't dumb. And I, I would never, uh, you know, be ignorant to them in, this, in the same fact. Um, if you could see her on my arm, I even have a, a tattoo. Of oh, Morty. wow. First of all, Maluga. Uh, this is mine of similar, like like you said. I had one when I was a kid. Uh, it, it was like, you know, most kids had teddy bears or whatever other nonsense. I'm a goofball, odd soul, like the name suggests. And I had this, dude. I took it everywhere with me. It was like my security blanket. And what better thing to practice wrestling moves, too? Like, you guys know my size, right? So, like, this is, like, relatively, like, the best wrestling companion there was back then. <laughs> You're flooding back nostalgia. because pre-wrestling buddies they were perfect the oh, only dude. the only problem was the eyes nose and teeth are very hard plastic and you could bust yourself up a one <laughs> yeah i mean i guess that like uh paved the way for me to get beat with light tubes and thumbtacks down the line so yeah but yeah no landing on those didn't feel great so you you have to watch the macho man elbow when you were going off the couch yeah yeah absolutely i've broken many of beds in my day uh me and my cousin jimmy have the record i think we're up to like double digits just nice you, they, we get invited over to someone's house we get bored we sneak off and find a room and uh wrestlemania happened every time and 
somehow a leg snapped off a bed and we didn't know what happened. Oh, no doubt. So I'm Italian. There's like 90 cousins on each side. It's yep. just bad. Oh, yeah, man. Like they knew like, oh, well, Vinny's going to be there and he loves wrestling. So something's going to get wild. <laughs> so is that wrestling has always been in your blood, been around forever? Oh, absolutely. Um, I felt like most people uh, fell in love super early. My dad and my uncle Tony took me to the now gone Philadelphia Spectrum. Uh, the main event, I, I, it, I think it was like early 90s, late 80s. I think it was like Hart and Bret Hart and Sergeant Slaughter. I can't remember the exact date, but like, yeah, captivated early. Yeah. Uh, so that was like, what, do, you, do you remember, was that your first event that got you into it or did you see it on TV first? Yeah, I had seen it, um, you know, the Saturday morning live. Uh, what, what else? There wasn't Monday Night Raw back then. The, I, I guess tape trading too. So yeah. like my uncle definitely brought over tapes and then my dad took me to go see it. And then it was just bonkers from there. Yeah, absolutely. Who were some of your favorites growing up? Oh, uh, you know, I was a true workhorse fan. Perfect. Uh, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, when he broke off, Marty Jannetty. I mean, I, I like the larger than life characters, Hogan and Sid, they were great, but like, I really enjoyed that stuff more so at like survivor series where it could be on full display when they had like powerhouse teams, because yeah. then, you know, when you have like, LOD, like, you know, chomping away through everybody, that's fun, but, like, when you have them barreled up against, with two other jack dudes against Demolition, you know, it's, it, it, it caters to, you know, different people's different tastes kind of thing. Absolutely. But, yeah. We're so into, like, your, Mr. Perfect was a huge fave early on. Yeah, yeah, he was, his vignettes always got me, like, the, the behind the back shots and throwing a football and catching it, I ate all that up. I, even as a kid, for some reason, gravitated to heels, man. Uh, everyone was a, a Macho Man guy. I mean, a, a Hogan guy, and I was like, I'm not into Hogan. Like, I was already bored with that baby face comeback from behind, winning. I, I was like, this is stupid. Like, he always wins. I hated it, and uh, it, I it fell was... in love with Macho. I fell in love with Perfect Piper. Even though Jake the Snake made me cry and scared the shit out of me, I was a Jake the Snake guy. Oh, Piper, yeah. So, like, I mean, I liked heels like kids did too, but like, there was I, I don't know, definitely distinct ones caught my eye, like Papa Shango. Absolutely. Like Yokozuna, I think due to his dimension and like just the like, like you said, the less is more like Jake had the promos and scared you. But like Yokozuna was just like, oh, my God, dude, like there's like no escape in this dude. And if you're yeah. caught up, like, you know, it's feeding that mindset of a child like it's different characters were good. But, I, I, you know, I, I for me, I was just different in the fact that like I like seeing that athletic creativity on top of it. Awesome, man. Awesome. So um, how did you find this business uh, as you got to the point where you were going to start training and getting into it? Um, so, you know, the older you get, the, the more you fall into different atmospheres and different scenarios. Um, I, I believe like most kids, like my junior high years, I was like that last, I would, yeah, like fifth grade, sixth grade into junior high. I was like that last generation of kids that were like, I wouldn't say bullied, but like you were definitely like looked down upon or like straight up weirdo if you watched wrestling kind of thing or like were more than a casual viewer. Wrestling, uh, pop culture, video games, you, especially where I grew up in like a small coal region town in Pennsylvania. If yeah. you went to school and you're like, yo, man, I just watch Pokemon or Power Rangers or I like pro wrestling, you're like, yo, join the football team, get on the basketball team, or oh. you're nothing to us. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah, great ragged upon, man. You yeah. definitely felt, I definitely, so I'm, I'm, I just turned 38. Um, I definitely fell into a small group, but um, a, a core group, man. Like, there's, uh, you know, you see this now, there's nothing stronger than a wrestling community. Yes. And, the bigger the waves go, the the stronger it gets. And there's way less of that bullying as time moves on. But back then, my core group of friends, like most, uh, turned me on to ECW, which, you know, it's I, I don't think I missed any pay-per-view from any Anarchy Rules, the Heat Wave to November to remember. I didn't miss anything. I loved it. But as far as, like, wanting to go after it, my friends turned me on to CZW and JAP. And man, like going to see, not, I, I wouldn't just call it indie wrestling because those fan bases, dude, it was like a family, especially CZW. Cause me and my friends went to, if there was a CZW show, like we didn't miss it. Like it, it, it was just, we bled it. And there was something about that era that just, I, I just said to myself, I said, I've 
devoted so much time in my life to this. Like, why would I not go after this kind of thing? Yeah. How you said that about the, the venue felt like a family. That is something I've really, really experienced because I, 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 I've been very fortunate in my short time here that I work for multiple different companies. And like, for example, PPW and Broadheadsville, like that crowd, they all talk to each other. They're all like, oh, you're here at the show again. They, they communicate like they're, they're They heckle each other. They they're, they commit to the show. They like the heels. They like the villain, like the baby faces. Uh, the, 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 the fans interact with the talent, the talent come out during intermission and interact. And that's something that the talent also has to help build. It's like a promotion obviously is there, but there's some talent who show up, put their merch table out, sell their stuff. And then after their match is done, they go home. And then they're like, Oh, this promotion doesn't do well. It's like, well, you got to help kind of build a culture a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, um iwa in new jersey i just became a part of that is the most insane fans i've ever seen in my life like they're they're yeah. so passionate about it and once again they all come every show and they're like hey there's my friend and there's this person and like that's a cool thing that's building up and uh i feel like that's starting to happen with shore star and i'm excited to see Dude, how it's grown. bro thank that we're on like the same wavelength right now and mm -hmm. you hit it head like so i'm being honest and sincere when i say i call them my family because small beginnings dude these people love it and like you said with ppw that makes such an entire difference when everybody's on board a to z people are showing up fans friends workers alike just for the pro you know what i mean uh -huh. and i felt that such early on at those czw shows like you said like when I was on that side of the rail, dudes like Nick Mondo, Rick Blade, Trent Acid, all, I mean, I could go on and name them all for forever, but like, and the funny part about it was like CZW was notorious for starting an hour late. So like shows weren't starting till like nine and these Indie dudes, wrestling. Yeah. And these poor dudes would put on like, it was such heavy competition. Like nobody was phoning it in. There was no shitty match at a CZW show or JAP show back then. And these poor dudes would be like, clock would be up one o'clock in the morning and they'd be there for another two hours just bullshitting with us you know what i mean when they had no business when dudes are probably trying to catch flights back to cali or something but it says something about that family atmosphere that makes a place that exceptional yeah so yeah kind of we kind of got off track because we got excited about the the grow with there but how did you <laughs> find you, you found the independent scene and found that out so that was kind of another driving factor like how do i get into this right yeah, absolutely. I just, I just fell in love with it, man. Like I, I'm, I'm one of those people, dude, I don't like sitting on my hands and I've always believed, you know, and I'm sorry if it sounds cocky, but in the most least confident, you know, way, like I just, if I know I can do something, I need to be part of the team. Like yeah. I, I not just, you know, and, and if it's something I love, then what's that old phrase they say? Like, if you don't want to work a day in your life, do something you love, dude, like, of course I'm going to chase after this. What school did you land in? Um, so early on, uh, me and my friends trained <laughs> at the at the CZW Academy, but we were kind of buttholes, and to be totally fair, and we didn't pay our dues the way we should, and we kind of didn't train correctly. And you know, we we self trained. I I've been in the yard since sixth grade, kind of thing, and mm -hmm. not that it remotely counts. But like to say when I officially got trained properly, went through A through Z education was I started in 2010 at the Monster Factory. Okay. And I went through the rigors of everything, you know, not that, you know, like a lot of rush shaking, but definitely through everything there. That's a, that's a prestigious school right there. A lot of names came out of that place. Oh, heck yeah, dude. And it was really cool because me and my kid brother were like part of the reopening and um, it, it was just awesome. Awesome class I had started with. Awesome group of people. Who's your favorite Monster Factory uh, alumni? Oh, man, it's it's so tough. Um, There's so many to pick from. Yeah, definitely being a Jersey boy, uh, Bam Bam is... I was going to say, it's Bam, it has to be Bam Bam. Yeah. yeah. Um, Seamus, dude, I, I, you know, for somebody who I didn't really care for to begin with, like, I, I dug him, like, I understood, you know, where he's going and what he's doing kind of thing. But, like, over time, dude, what a fine wine, right? Yeah. Like, he's, so he hit a new stride this, 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 this quarter of his career, like, this last couple months, he's been just on fire. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So, when did you, you know, you got your training done? How long did you train before you, you've, you know, you landed at a promotion and started, uh, start putting matches together? 
Um, that's a super cool thing about the Monster Factory. Like you said, there's prestige there for a reason. Um, Danny's never the guy to tell us no, not do something. He's He was always about go after it, chase it, you know, but do it when the time's right. Like, mm-hmm. don't go out there and, you know, he, and he, it's one of those things where, like, he didn't even, like, have to say that in certain terms. Like, he, you know, he's like, you'll know, you know, just like... But just don't do it beforehand because then one, you make an ass out of you and you make an ass out of us kind of thing. So there there was definitely like, and I'm sure there is still there now, even with the insane amount of people they have going through there, which is awesome. But like, there's just that core, you know, you have that respect for that place. So I would say I didn't really, it took me for like, I wanted to give it like a year and some change before. I, I mean, I did shows there. I think we did Turkey Slam like six months in. I did, we did the Turkey Slam was like my debut there. But I didn't like, you know, go out there and try to have clinics anywhere else until like a year after. Yeah. Now, you have this really cool thing about your wrestling ability because you do bring like that backyard deathmatch grit and just psychoticness about your character and stuff. I haven't actually seen... um that side of you too much um mm-hmm. so i i was doing some research about you and there's a guy in the the, the the jersey scene that i i'm a huge fan of and you guys have been tag teams for a long time and this kid's a psychopath you know who i'm talking about are we talking about dirt dog dirt back dan no well, dirt back dan's a psychopath too but no uh um <laughs> did, didn't you team up with um now i'm having a brain fart i'm, I'm so, so much cold medicine to me oh, um, born charlie bonifer bonifer yes <laughs> It's Aido Death Squad. Yeah, it's Aido Death Squad. So I was like, I, I haven't really, like, this guy's putting needles through his cheeks. He's taking, like, things to his forehead. And Absolutely. and you get down like that, too. But also, you do have that technical side where you, the best way I can describe you, and it's maybe because it's your size, your frame, your heart, your determination. But you have, like, if Nick Gage and Johnny Gargano had, like, a baby. You know what I mean? Like, you know <laughs> oh what I mean? Like, stop. Like, you're making- Look, bro, that's the best compliment ever. <laughs> yeah, it's it, you're like the perfect mix. Like you can go in there and you can do a, a, a legit wrestling match, or you can go in there and do a hardcore match, or a death match, or anything like that. And it's it's you're a very fun person to watch. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that greatly, dude. And in turn, you're very much a fun person to hear. You and Pete, bro, um, a great team, dude. Again, that's why I'm super appreciative of being on here. Um, to jump back around there, um, but. First to 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 say, yeah, Bonifer's a crazy dude. We are still a very much an active tag team in the Saido Death Squad. Uh, you know, but it's it's one of those things too where where Bonifer, uh, I you know, we just make sure in the same breath we want each other to get single shine because he's as much as I love my singles career, I am all about that dude getting the shine that he deserves too, because he's super talented. Um and Whereas he may not showcase it as much like you defer to. I, I like to be that chameleon, man. I, I don't know. There's just something about it where I feel like different atmospheres call for different forms of Vinicenzo. Um, yeah. I, I do love Deathmatch, um, but I, I I definitely have to cite influences, man. I, uh, I'm, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram. Like half my Instagram is filled with music things, too. Of just mm-hmm. wild, dude. It's all over the place. And I feel like wrestling is so much like music. And we just had this conversation with uh, J- uh, Hendrick in the, la- in the episode earlier and how it's just a beautiful combination. And if, you, if you're if you in one industry, the other one's not too far behind it. Yeah, dude, you got to be able to play jazz, man. And, yeah. you know, that's the thing I've learned. And I learned that from Monster Factory where I trained that. Like, you know, I, I can't go into every place swinging light tubes and expecting people to appreciate that kind of thing. So, you know, I, I really do my best to, to try to get a read for the room and give people what they want, because at the end of the day, dude, these, these people that I'm calling my family, they paid money to see this man. And I just want to deliver the best form of myself to them. Absolutely. Yeah. That, and that, I think it definitely shines through, man. I, uh, Thank like you. I said, going, going back to the start of short start, I, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm, it's not hard to put them over. Cause like I just said, I think what they're building there is super special. Um, is, is I just going into that place. And I remember Pete just kind of like, yo, this guy's good. You're going to like him. You're going to really like him. Cause he knows the style of wrestler. I like, and then at the end of the show, he's like, who's your favorite. I, when I was like, dude, there's like five, like, I like, I can't pick a favorite. There's so many good ones. Uh, you definitely stood out. Uh, um, I, li- I like Everest a lot and I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not a big guy fan, but I like Everest, I like Yusufer. But I think the guy who really stood out for me is, 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 uh, 
uh, uh, Corvus. I'm I'm a big Corvus hey. fan, but also like I'm a Kevin Owens fan. So, but the cool thing about Shore Star is how you guys clipped your matches and then put the clips on. But then you show us love on commentary saying like, like if I say like, this is a champion we could be proud of. And then you're like, Anthony Blackwell on commentary is not wrong here. It's like, that's, I've never, like, that was the first time a wrestler or a promotion, like when they share their clips, they show like, well, this is the guy on commentary saying, it. and I was like, that means a lot, man. Like, I don't know, man. I really like what they're building there. D- dude. Well, here's the thing. You say they, bro, you're part of the team, bro. It's a wee yeah, thing. I got to um, stop doing Yeah. You know what I mean, bro? It's, I, 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 like I said, when I said before, I'm part of that team mentality, dude. And, and everybody's a part of the team from the people who paid the money to get in and sit on that side of the guardrail to the people announcing it. Because it, if we're all there for, for vanity reasons, then it's not really a product. It's just a vanity show, dude. And I, and I wouldn't, I don't fancy myself to be a part of anything like that. I fancy my part, you know, something special. And we definitely have that at your star. Yeah. So, what are some like so? I uh, usually ask what are some names you work at, but kind of your bit you've been working on recently is you've been taking on ECW legends. You're trying to to knock them off your bucket list. So who all have you worked on the ECW side of things? Yeah, that's oh man, what a list. Um, I first before as much as I love Uncle G and I'll I'll, I'll to Pitbull Gary Wolf. I'll get to him next. Um, one of the first ones I had a lot of matches with was Balls Mahoney, God rest his soul. Uh, such a super fun dude. Um, just like as all over the place as you, I don't know if you've ever been around him when he was here. Uh, no. Dude, out of control fun, bro. And like as crazy as it sounds, getting nailed in the head by, by a chair from that dude is like such a rite of passage for me. And I cherish it so much. Uh, I learned so much from him, and like one of the weirdest matches in my career was me and Jeff Noyes versus Balls Mahoney and Superfly Jimmy Snuka. It was it was just like such a random match, and just like one of those ones that was like I don't know how this got put together, but thank God for a dude like JD Smooth. I miss you, Smoothie, out in Indiana. Um, that's my dude, and uh, he he just man, to, something like that is just wild to say happen. Have you ever heard my shook, my snooker story? No, I'd love to hear it. All right. So if you heard this before, I apologize, but this is amazing. So we go to a show uh, in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. My aunt, uh, she passed away, but she knew I was into wrestling. And she's like, hey, um, I, I, I he- I'm hearing that there's a show here. It's like a, in a small little tent. Come up. Jimmy Snook is going to be there. Now, she knows Jimmy Snook because he's like he was so big at one time. So she doesn't know anything about wrestling, but she knows Jimmy Snook was a big deal. So she brings me and my little brother up. Now, me and my brother are 11 years apart. So I'm like maybe 13, 14. He's real young. So we get there early. We're sitting in the front row in this this pop-up tent. And um, we we get there, and they make an announcement. It's like, hey, we have um, a special needs family. And if anyone's willing to give up their seats for the special needs family so they can sit, it'd be greatly appreciated. No one's moving. And then I look at my brother. I go, stand up. And I said, you can have our seats. And we're front row. Oh, heck and my, yeah. And my aunt's like, what are you doing? I like, cause she was, she, she did, like, she kind of stood in the back. She didn't really care about being in front row. And my brother's like, okay, whatever. Cause he just followed me and we gave our seats up. So the promoter goes to me, he goes, Hey kid, when the show's over, see that door. And I was like, yeah. He goes, go to that door. I, I got a, I got a great surprise for you for being a good sport. I like, go, all right, whatever, man. So 14 years old, we watched the whole show and I go over to the door and he's like, come on in. And he gets these three chairs and he puts three chairs down. I'm like, I'm not going to like have a conversation with Jimmy Snooker. This is great. Jimmy Snooker walks in. Doesn't say a word to me. Gives me a head nod to me and my brother. Towels himself off. Changes his pants and underwear in front of us. Oh, Jesus. Puts puts on a new shirt. Puts his boots on. Gets up and walks out. So we gave up our seats for a strip tease for Jimmy Snuka. Hell yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. So you'll dig this. That same same match we wrestled him in. um, Something happened. We're... uh, And the... at is like literally right next to the hospital so something happened in the match before us dude caught like a really bad stinger and they had to like leave him in the ring he had to kind of like get carted out like he couldn't be moved they're terrifying out. yeah so we're like you know we're like okay intermission and we're next i watched jimmy snip jimmy fucking smoke a smoke oh, i'm sorry are we allowed on the cuss on yeah, yeah curse curse all you want bro dude packs down a whole pack of marble reds and i'm like we're going out there i'm like bro this dude's gonna have a heart attack i'm not i'm like i'm gonna send him off at all i could kill him yeah 
Oh man, too funny. So who else is on that ECW list? Uh, okay, so yeah, definitely Balls, Pipple Gary Wolf's been on there. I've Shane Douglas. Just Snuka's technically is, is also ECW. Yeah, he, he's yeah. Turn, right? Yeah, uh, Snuka. Um, oh, God. No, no, not Jerry. Um, H. I H. Loke. You know, H. G. Loke. God, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm so old, and I'm such a stoner, so forgive me for my memory being rotten. I think you and Gary need to run it back, though. Oh, uh, yeah, me and Gary, we've, we've definitely run it a few times. Gary's he's awesome. I'd love to do it again. Um... I, Keep I that dilf out of it, though. Oh, Christian York. Christian York made me rip my underpants once. Yeah, chased me out of the ring. I ripped my shit right straight through. It was hilarious. <laughs> uh, I, I can't think of any offhand. I'm sure there's more, but if I think of them, I'll bring them back out there. Awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, so now you're the current uh, short star champion, uh, heavyweight champion. What are some other titles you have earned in your career or uh, that you've acquired? Uh, I was a SWF heavyweight champion. Well, I was the SWF Grand Slam champion, the first ever one there. I've, I've been tag titles there a few times. Um, they're defunct now. Uh, I've won the Crossroads Tag Team Champions twice. Um, first and only Val's Pals, uh, Val Falzerano, uh, Battle Royal winner. Uh, that'd be rad if they throw that back again. And a, a title I hold very, very prestigious. I'm, I believe, the first player to complete a three-point play in basket brawl for the faces. Oh, okay. Did you hear about basket brawl? Did you guys? Yeah, I, I'm going to be honest. I, um, I, I'm a chubby dude, right? And I, my body is destroyed. But uh, before I got fat and out of shape and terrible and my body fell apart, I was a pretty decent basketball player. Oh, um, nice. And I haven't touched a basketball in probably nine years. Looks like but, we're two, two weeks, baby. But if uh, if the opportunity presented itself to play on uh, the wrestling basketball thing again, I would 100% get on a court and play a couple. I'd go up and down the court a couple times. Yeah, I don't know if when – I know Shane Fair put it together, man, and he did awesome. They raised a lot of money for the uh, Valerie – I believe it was the Valerie for the Miracle League. Yes, the Miracle yeah. League. It was super rad. Um I hope they do it again. If he does it again, we're definitely rocking, dude. It'll be so much fun. Were you team heels or face? I was team face. Team face. I don't. Yeah. I'm not sure who. Like, I'm normally a face. I, I wouldn't really say I define myself as a character on commentary. Um, I have some fun as like I've been playing around with heel a lot more in Jersey, just because it's for me. It's fun to like tear apart Jersey on commentary. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I. That's the beautiful thing of working with Pete is because we we have that chemistry where we both kind of like try things out just for a show. Like, hey, let's try, let's just for this show have some fun and give this a shot, you know. But uh, it's it's uh, it's fun, yeah. So right another thing I, I've noticed on your Instagram, besides music and besides professional wrestling, um, mm. you're you're a bit of an artist. Oh man, I I I wouldn't fancy Our my cartoonist. Yeah, I would. That's that's fair to say. I, I I'm a aspiring cartoonist. I um, I definitely took art class all growing up, but uh, I never like you know pursued it like for a career or anything. So you know, I'm I'm devoting as much time to it as I can. What are what what uh is that like something that's uh, a little stress relief for you? Like how did that come about? You know, it's definitely one of those things. I just you know I'm like I I not that I'm having a midlife crisis or anything, but I'm like, I'm turning 40 and I'm like, you know, one of those things I feel like before age sets in, you know, just keep the hands and eyes active, you know, Uh, how many times a day do we catch ourselves just staring at our phones like this, you know? And uh, I'm guilty of it just as much as anybody, dude, every wrestler, we got to be on social media promoting our shit day in, day out. We got to make sure we're sharing for these promoters. So I, you know, I'm very much a family first person, and I like to just take that that two hours when I'm with my kids and whether, you know, we'll sit and talk about our day and doodle. It's just that's just family time too. have have your uh, wife and kids ever like do they go to your matches a lot? Oh, so me and Kat aren't married yet. Um, okay. even, but we're, we're on the path. We're getting there. <laughs> um, she uh, yeah, Kat's super supportive and my kids are su- super supportive as well. They uh, they come to as many as they can to. Now, have they ever came to like one of your crazy bl- blood table ones? <laughs> um, I, I try to keep them away from the full blown deathmatch stuff. Uh, 
I, cattle come to it. She's not super stoked about it, but she. I feel uh, like you're like Mick Foley in the back out, like during that, like the like in the behind the uh, beyond the mat where Mick bleeds. Like it's okay, kids, and he's like bleeding everywhere. So actually, I got my um my sister's boyfriend is kind of not too privy to wrestling at all, and he wanted to come out to an event because he you know he's he had been dating my sister for a little bit. So I have the bright idea of a dude who's super squeamish by blood to have him come out to the one where I was on John Wayne Murdoch's uh, violence for the sake of. And man, it was hilarious because he almost passed out. Uh, Satu took his machete and they gave me the old bop, 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 slice, slice, slice kind of deal. And I started to bleed buckets and, and I'm looking over and I could see him like in between like the blood filling on my eyes and he's like pale white. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I understand the allure of deathmatch wrestling. It's not 100% for me and, I, and it, it doesn't help now that I'm becoming more friends with people in the business who do it because it terrifies me, man. Like I think the biggest fear I have on commentary is having to do that moment where something serious happens, you know, oh, yeah. uh, because I like, uh, like I, 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 like I said, the, the Jersey scene has been really cool to me where, and, and, and all the companies I work for is really cool. Where commentary. We feel like we're part of it. You know what I mean? Where I, like when I first started doing this, I thought like commentary isn't, who cares you know what i mean they just throw anybody in there it's not a big deal and that environment and culture has changed because of i think there's a lot of really talented people who are filling those shoes and starting to show that like no if you book really good commentary it's going to change your your aspect like in pa you got myself paul um paul Bo, um pete DeLong in jersey you got uh, alfonso and 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 john weiss and and, and pop culture, you know what I mean? Like they're like, we're really setting a higher bar for what independent wrestling has to do when it comes to commentary. And it's kind of dope that we're all kind of putting that effort into becoming better, but yeah, it sucks. My, like, I, I, that's the biggest thing I dread is like, I see like a spot happen and I'll like reach over and grab Pete. And I'm like, like, and I'll be like, is he all right? Like, yeah, it's, it's scary, but I couldn't even, I'd never done a, like, I think the closest I got was, uh, was that pro wrestling after dark with with Corvus and Bonifer and their little light, uh, but like the, yeah, the light tube stuff? But I was like, ooh, I was like, you guys are nuts. Yeah, I, did. I believe Fringe too. That's the thing. Like you know, that's why you know, like you said, we're jumping back to the chameleon thing. Like I'll never fancy myself like a full on deathmatch worker because I I would never want to do like the give them disrespect. You know what I mean? Because there's these dudes who. Man, and they they police it so well because there's these dudes in places like GCW and ICW and these premier companies who are actually putting on story, not not just stories, but like these epic encounters. And they can only be as safe as they can. But like you said, it's so hard to raise the bar, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's tough. And, you know, like something that sticks out to me huge and, you know, it's. Uh, I can't remember which show exactly, but Jimmy Lloyd did did one, and I think it was like a bed of knives or, or saws or something. And man, this thing it just went so deep into the poor dude. And and it's like you said, man, you you know, as safe as they can be, as silly as that sounds, they do. But like it's it's something that can go so south so quick. And I I, I can't put myself full blown into that venue because I value my relationship with my kids more and I'm not trying to be, you know, hospital ridden. <laughs> yeah. It, it is crazy. Cause I, I, I totally get like, I, the thing that people always say is, Oh, independent wrestling where a guy breaks his neck for 15 people. But if he's not out there trying, how do you expect to, to, to get seen and get noticed? So it's kind of like that double edged sword, but like you see these people and you know what they probably bring home at the end of the day at the venue. And you're like, dude, did you really need to like, Thumbtacks and light tubes, like sure, that's the one everyone's like, yeah. And does trust me, no, none of it. I've never personally taken it, but it's there's ways that you guys are intelligent enough to get through it. But then there's some things that are done like unprotected head chair shots. I'm just like, ah, oh, let's not do those anymore. Like you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, it's just I don't know. It's it's a it's terrifying, but yeah, I have a lot of love for you guys, and it scares Dude, me. Isn't that shit out of me? One of the things that it just as as crazy and as barbaric as it was, like it still sticks with me was when Rock and Foley, just the, the the handcuffed ones from years ago. I'll never forget they did it in CZW too. Um, they did it to Nick Gage. It was Justice Payne and this other dude, Steve Rivez. And seeing it like on TV with Foley was one thing. Hearing it with Nick Gage and him getting down to that knee was like, holy shit! Like yeah. just, dude, it's. 
You got to value yourself to a degree, man. Yeah, just use the kendo stick to the Tommy Dreamer spot or the, the leather strap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Save your heads. Protect your heads. Um, now, you've been in this game a long, long time. Um, what are some moments that really stand out for you or some key matchups or rivalries that are people you've worked with over the time that if you're like, hey, uh, I'm going to put a highlight video of the best of Vincenzo, who are some matches or some people that we should uh, that you would put in that highlight reel? Um, while we're on the shore star subject, uh, this, this sound, God it makes it such a hard thing to say sometimes. Um, Lucas Finnegan, such a history with that dude. Every time we wrestled brings the best out of me. Uh, so that's why I'm definitely super stoked for this one coming up. Cause it's been a minute since we've had a singles run. Uh, TJ Marconi, absolutely. Another one that I've, I've had some just, you know, just go out there and it's like, we're going to apologize later if we're feeling friendly about it kind of thing. And just y- y- the fans there feel it. We felt it just I, I definitely good vibes from those matches with TJ. Um, hmm. Bonifer, too. Um, as much as I love teaming with the dude, just the I just the let's go for it vibe I get when I'm out there with him. Bonifer is another one. Uh, I, I I haven't been able to to get him in any match yet, but Corvus is one I definitely want to get in there with. Um, oh, we you've were, never worked Corvus? No, I have. Ne- I have yet to. We were owed one years ago in SWF, and it's eluded us. Wow. Yeah. Yo, Chad, make that happen. I'm I'm sure we're gonna get around to it. You know who's another one? Just to kind of throw out there that I really fell in love with that that jersey scene. Jay the Key. Yeah, Jay, Jay the K. We just had a fun one at the Middlesex County Fair. It was me versus him versus Chris Steeler. Uh, yeah. Really. So here's the poster here for the next Shore Star show coming up. Uh, no Limits, uh, Saturday, December 10th uh, at the No Limits Boxing, Ac- Boxing Academy uh, in Rio Grande. Uh, card is stacked, man. So much fun there. But uh, every match on there is fantastic in your match. But we always like to put other people over here. We, uh, here's the match that uh, I'm insanely pumped for right here oh Black, yeah i am a blackstrom blackstrom far so much and I've, I've been seeing rocket on the gcw settlement series stuff out of h2o this kid is going to be signed it's only a matter of time daniel right. alexander is the highest energy person i've ever seen in my life tarzan's amazing and it'd be my first time watching steve off oh dude you're in for a treat with steve off but i'm in a I'm, I won't take too long, but I want to jump around that whole circle. Dude, yeah, I just absolutely. Titan, dude, j- so incredibly good. And, oh, that's right. He was, he was, I'm sorry. He was wrestling Daniel Alexander. What yeah. a match. Had. Um, Blastrum, like you said, so incredibly good. I've been in there with Tarzan Duran. I can't tell you how many times. An incredible talent. Steve oh, off. I do too. Yeah, dude, Steve off. You're in for a treat. Dude, so good. But yeah, Rocket, man, He he's something. Dude, he did a frog splash in H2O. And when he was in the air, it was like Montez Ford height. Like, where you watch Montez Ford do a frog splash, you're like, how did he get that high? And this dude had the nerve to, like, act like Vince Carter and go between his legs and then frog splash. I was like, this guy is, he's a freak. He's a freak of nature. Rocket was, it takes two to tangle. Uh, Alexander was just as good. I, I, I watched that Titan match, dude. Like, I couldn't blink. So good. Yeah, yeah. Keep definitely. Like I said, I'm I'm proud, man. Like the PI I, when I was in the PA scene, just only working there. I was like, dude, the PA scene's amazing. And then I go to Jersey, I'm like, it's like independent wrestling as a whole is just so good. It's so thriving. good. Our dude, it's thriving. Yeah, and if you don't subscribe already, yeah, uh, independent wrestling te- TV uh, dot com IWTV for ten bucks a month, man. All these promotions are on there. Shore Stars on there. You can go back and watch the old stuff. Um, as well as standalone wrestling, as well as pro wrestling after dark, and a lot of the other promotions that we talked about, you can go and check out and watch all their stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Another thing that's happening uh, this Saturday, the contest of champions. You have a match for that one as well. Um, as per Morty, we're keeping it pretty tight lipped. Um, I, I can't say for certain what we're doing yet, but we are definitely going to be active at contest of champions. Uh, this guy's pretty adamant being the space boy because uh, as per him, he, you know, he kind of just appeared from outer space in my backyard. He, uh, he would love to go take on Leo Sparrow and take his earth belt to outer space. Oh, and we're, uh, we're, 
for another go at it again because last time I was in a ring with Leo Sparrow, he shoved spinach very hard right there, and he was not a fan. No, he doesn't need spinach. <laughs> no, me neither, dude. All the uh, past. Leo, Leo Sparrow beat uh, a guy who looks exactly like me uh, in Rio Grande uh, on the side of the road to actually get his first ever I saw the defense that. for uh, that was the that was the only bump I've ever taken in wrestling, and that's that's pretty much it. That's as as far as I'm ever gonna go. But it was I was he was like, "Yo, can you do this for me?" I was like, "Hell yeah, it's a good time." But that that kid, unbelievable. I love watching him. Leo Sparrow, super good dude. Uh, and also, uh, the 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 constant champion is gonna be a. A seminar beforehand where people are going to go and get to do some in-ring seminars for a lot of rather big uh, companies in the tri-state area where either it be PA, New York, you know, big name companies. Uh, if you're a wrestler commentating anything, please uh, take advantage of this. Get get there. Uh, reach out to Standalone Wrestling, uh, their email address. Everything's on their social media and get a part of that con uh, as well as the uh, not the con, the, the seminar beforehand, the con middle of the day. To, to get all your autographs and uh there will be a really really cool dude walking around as the host of Heck. it the, there it is there that guy That's um and then there's a show after and your ticket for the con gets you into the show as well which you can't beat that is uh it's a it's a, it's a must-have deal and that's going to be this saturday in tom's river new jersey so make sure you guys all come out and support i i thought my stickers would be here in time but it's not looking like it but i have business cards i can give away i just got i just got those printed up but stickers are coming um, I'll have them for icons. I'm gonna be at icons um, uh, for in December for the giant ECW show they're doing. Are you going to that? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to attend that one. But yeah, I'm super stoked for Saturday, man. It's it's double special for me because I was the first graduating high school class in that building. Really? Yeah, that's sick, but man. When they were building that building, um, my high school in North, which is next to it, like they had to like pull off the ca- the cafeteria so like kids wouldn't go in while they were building it. And my art class, like we painted like uh you know little things over the barricades that they put up over it. They you know they were only there for a few weeks, but it was kind of cool. Like it's like this is like full circle for me. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So now you said a little bit about music. Uh. Do you do you play any instruments or are you just a music fan? Um, I tried to uh, play guitar as a kid, but I have these very fat fingers. It's very hard for me to keep my frets, um, maybe in the next life. Uh, but no, I'm very just much an eclectic listener to anything and everything. What's your genre? Oh man. Um, I, I definitely would say I veer towards alternative, uh, more than most, uh, thrice favorite band of all time. Um, but you, you can catch me listening to a lot of ska, a lot of punk, a lot of alternative, but you know this new metal too. I, I I dig some of the newer metal. Um, a lot of hip hop. Love hip hop. Do you like me? You pretty much anything. Yeah, dude. I I can listen to some country too. Like not all of it, but I'm getting yeah. more inclined with country. The, I think the newer version of country is a little more for me, like the Zach Brown, where it almost sounds like rock and roll. Heck um, yeah. And, and everyone's not trying to sound exactly the same. It's funny because I'm like like the country's starting to like differentiate each other. And hip hop is going the other direction where everyone's trying to sound like the same thing. And it's kind of a frustrating. Yeah. If you throw enough good guitar in there for me, like I'm, I'm set. That's yeah, absolutely. What are some favorite bands you like to go see? Uh, every November, I definitely tried to catch the kill switch show at Starland. Um, they have like a special beer every show for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, bouncing souls. Always fun to see live. Uh, I used to do the bamboozle thing when, when it was around, um, I, I believe they're bringing that back or they may have brought it back. I just haven't seen it. Uh, Jimmy world, another band love seeing live. I, so when my wife was in college, um, she went to Bloomsburg university. We were walking by and it said free show for students and their, and, and, and a guest or whatever. And it said, just go to the, 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 the gymnasium, whatever. It's a free concert. And I was like, I looked at it and it was Jimmy world and Paramore. And, well, and uh, at the time, they were not Jimmy Eat World and Paramore. Like, they were just, like, up and coming. And I was like, I was like, I want to go see a show. And she was like, I'm not really into that. And then, like, three months later, I was like, she's like, I listened to Paramore. And she fell in love with them. I'm like, you know they were at your school. She's like, was that that free concert? I go, yep. She's like, fucking wow. Like, she was so mad. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, I just went and seen Guar for the first time. Have you ever experienced a Guar show? Uh, now, yeah, years ago I went. It was sick, dude. So I, with my body thing and my joint disorder, there was no chance I was getting that pit. And I was like, man, like I want to bring home that experience of 
you know, the, the fucked up t-shirt. Yeah. So I had a friend, she is an absolute maniac. So I went and bought the white glow in the dark war shirt and she took it into the pit and got it destroyed. Yes. That is so cool. So much fun. Uh, that is a great band. Another one. I love gimmick and wrestling stuff. Uh, Steel Panther. Did you ever go see them live? I have not seen Steel Panther live. I wish They're I had. They're a good time. I, I love hair metal. That's kind of like my, my yeah. secret. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome, man. Uh, anything else that you do for hobbies besides your art and music? Are you um, a gamer? No, I'm awful. So I'll play my son in FIFA, and he's, he definitely whips my ass. But I have, he was hard to learn. Yeah, Rocket League's a fun one too, where you're where you're the car playing soccer. Mm-hmm. Um, that's still whips my ass in it. Uh, but if we were to take out the sixty four and we played Goldeneye, I'd murder him. It's like Goldeneye's dude. coming back. Yeah, dude, I saw. That's dope. Yeah, and play the Ninja Turtle games too. There were any Ninja Turtles game. They had that Calabunga collection thing. That's did somewhere. you see the the Shredder's Revenge? Did you play that one yet? Yeah, we got that for the Switch. Oh, yeah. so good! What a good retake, right? They did so yeah. good. Uh, real quick in the chat, Mick. I know you're here, buddy. I, I I'm doing an interview, man. That's why I put your thing in there. We see you. I love you, brother. <laughs> uh, but yeah, th- thank you everyone in the chat. If anyone has any questions, uh, put them in the chat, and we'll get to those right away. Um, because we are getting closer to the ending of the show here. Uh, what are some future goals or plans for Vinny Genzo? Um, definitely gonna try to hold on to the Shore Star Wrestling Heavyweight Championship for as long as I can, dude. Um, I, I believe that with, with having it becomes every responsibility of defending it. I'm gonna defend it as often as I can, as long as this body will allow. Um, who knows where and when I'll end up. I, I'm kind of on and on, on and off active with UWA Elite. Uh, I very much would maybe like to make a return to Titan. Um, PPW sounds like a place I would love to make a debut at. Uh, you know, I, I, I keep it close to the chest. Uh, I'd very much like to be a surprise. But um, definitely uh, standalone wrestling and Shore Star are the core of my place right now. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. Now, I know in, in this industry – um, do you, people say, well, uh, obviously it's, it's scripted or it, it's all like, I heard someone say a, a title belt is just a prop to the show. Right. But mm-hmm. there, there is something to it, right? Like that's, that's the company saying that I have enough faith in you to put a title on you and not just a title, but the main title. And I want you to, you're, you're going to be the face and the brand of my company. You're going to be my main event guy. You're going to be the person to, to help carry this in. And now when shore star is kind of coming into a brand new market, coming into a brand new field, brand new venue, brand new area, like an area that did not have professional wrestling. Um, and you get told you're going to be that guy. What, what goes through your head? That's the neatest part about it, dude, man. It's like you said, dude, there it, it's something that's new for them. They didn't, they haven't really had it. Right. And, and to bring it back to, out to music, um, BB King, one of the greatest of all times, L- Lucille, I believe, right. Was the name of, mm-hmm. of his name. Lucille is awesome. Lucille is wonderful. Lucille holds all the potential in the world. But until B.B. King takes the effort and precisely plays Lucille, Lucille can is effort is pointless. It's nothing. It's it's just solid matter. And I refuse to let that belt be that. I, I want to be that character behind it. I want to be that match in the ring that those kids were like, holy crow, man, that was crazy that that dude did that. I want to be that feel good feeling for somebody who maybe had a shitty week and just coming out watching their kids smile because of some goofy shit I did in the ring. Dude, whatever I can make that belt be of intrinsic value to somebody i believe in doing that and i mean maybe that's just me but that's what i i believe that there's substance as long as you make it kind of deal yeah. whoever uh whoever if, if someone does take it off you man they have big big shoes to fill i'll tell you that uh, right now because because think- not only you, you do everything in the ring but also outside and like i said the crowd interaction what you do with the fans you're 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 a good dude man i i'm very very glad i met you in this most recent time, you know, that feeling's very mutual, man. Um, I, I, I was just, you know, you hear it from dudes like Preacher and dudes like Danny who who taught me growing in, you know, just you want to leave. It, it, I know it's a blanket statement, but you want to leave wrestling better than when you left it, right? Yeah. Um, I know there's been times where I've messed up, I've made mistakes, and I've done 
bend over backwards to make sure I've done right by those times. Um, and now getting older with less years involved with this, probably, uh, you know, I want to make sure that I'm doing my part to, you know, make sure to give to, cause it's important to do that. Now being around, around, uh, around as long as you have and the style of wrestling that you, you know, have done with the death match. Have you ever had any major setbacks at all in your career? Oh yeah. A few years ago, I, um, compressed my T5, T6, T7 and T8. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's on top of being so short, I'm sure that didn't help at all, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was out of action for, I think a good six months then. Wow. Yeah. But, uh, uh, chiropractor and a lot of ortho visits and, you know, six months later I was rocking and rolling. Love that. Yeah. I can't wait to see when Bonifer is a hundred percent. Cause I've only been watching him work on a bum leg for the entire time. And I think he said he's taking a, a month off and then he's going to, he's going to come back. He doesn't need surgery or anything, but I'm excited for that because I actually want to see that guy go. Because even Pete was like, "Yo, if you like him now, wait till he's 100." percent Right? Yeah, he's itching. I told him I was like, "Dude, you just gotta, you gotta be careful." I, Philly Mike went through the same thing last year. I was telling him the same thing. I was like, "Yo, you, I know you guys are now in the impressionable time where you want to go balls to the wall and you're making a name." And I'm 100 percent not being that dude. Like, do it. Like, absolutely do it. But like, just try your best to be safe while doing it. You know, because. You know what match is a great example of that where you can have fun, you can do crazy shit and you're hundred percent. You're leaving safe as possible it is. And the blueprint of that is what you and HC Loke did at the first show. Yeah, dude. It looked crazy to wrestling fans. You went through a door maybe a little earlier than you were supposed to. Um, there was chair <laughs> shots. There was spit on you. Um, you jumped off things. The crowd followed you around the building, but it was right. as safe as you possibly could be. And it was done smart, you know? Yeah, we, we sure tried, man. I, I definitely feel like, not to sound cocky, but I feel like we delivered. Like, I, you hit it right on the head. We tried to do that. Just an all-around fun, had a tight of hardcore, like, that was needed. And people were with it and liked it. Yeah. And and, and those matches look great. And they hit all the marks you want to hit. But it's going to save a lot of years on your career. You're not, you're not risking uh, – uh, giant dive to the outside and hoping someone catches you and they don't. And then you bust your head open. It's yeah. I, I'll tell you what, man, I, uh, geez, I, I watched this one guy. I think he's from Pittsburgh. He, uh, he showed, he showed me a video of him doing like a four fifty. He was supposed to land on a table on the outside, completely missed it, head off the ground, split his skull. He's like Phoenix something. I forget. I'm having a brain fart, but, uh, yeah. What's that? Uh, yeah. The dude, Sean Phoenix, Sean Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, well, where did you, where did you do that? And he's like, oh, in PA. I was like, thank God. So you probably would have died in Jersey. <laughs> yeah, it gets crazy, man. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's terrifying. But it's, it's good to see, like, as you progress in your career, you can still do those crazy deathmatch and crazy things, but you're, you're using your intelligence to do it, but safely do it, you know? Yeah. I, you know, a lot of it goes in taking care of my body too. Uh, uh, a lot of people notice I, I, you know, I had a, a lot of a big weight loss journey this past two years. I've seen that. I was just about to bring that up. Um, but, uh, yeah, dude, I do a lot of stretching every day and it's super helpful. Uh, I devote at least 15 to 20 minutes of it before I go off for my work day. And it's definitely been a game changer for me. I, I, I was doing the DDP yoga for a little bit and I backed off on it, but I have to, uh, do more. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, man, if you if you find the time and make the time for it, it's it's so helpful. It's so good on the body. Mm. Yeah, it was it was really, really good. But I just I, I I was trying to do too much at once. And but this new rebrand of the podcast and everything is uh, is going to be good. But uh, no questions in the chat. So uh, anything else that you want to wrap up or get off or something that you want to talk about that we didn't have a chance to? Oh, no, man, I feel like we covered a lot, dude. I had I had a blast, man. I really same here. Yeah, uh, the goal for this podcast is I, I like doing them remote and hanging out with people, but I want to do more on location. Like I, I want to like at shows, sit down with people and record. Um, I have the equipment to do it, but I really want to get more um, when it comes to uh, on, on location, but do multi-camera. So I'm saving up for some, Go, some GoPros because with my joint disorder, it's a lot easier to just carry everything in a backpack than all of my shit that I used to carry with. But awesome. uh Anything that people can do when it comes to support, like liking, uh, there's like I said, the donations, the Donate merchandise. This was yeah. so much 
Dude, he's he, bro. You are so talented. You, Pete, like you said, man. You guys, such a breath of fresh air for us. I'm so glad y'all are part of the team. So please, like he said, donate to this. Let's make this big, man. This was such yeah. a fun. But and if you want to be on the show, uh, check the links below to sign up. Uh, I did get a message. I usually don't do this. I don't play on my phone during an interview, but my phone kept blowing up. Uh, I got a message saying, uh, "Listening to you talk to Chenzo, he's awesome. He's an awesome guy. Ask him about uh, our friend Mikey." Oh, okay. That's probably Sean McGee. Um, it is a Sean, yeah. Yeah, he's my sponsor for uh, the upcoming uh, Shore Star show. There you go. Um, yeah, he he's a really good dude. So if you notice uh, at the last show when I wrestled Blaze, I came out in that orange shirt. Yeah. Um, that's for my buddy Mikey Adams. He has a, a very specific disease that it affects his stomach and surrounding organs. Um, I'm trying to remember what it's. Uh, pray, no, no, not Prater. I'm trying to remember what the name of it is offhand. I'm, I'm, my, I'm such a brain fart from thinking. Uh, it's it's going to leave me, but I, I'll definitely post the link of it so, or tonight or in the comments. But um, the dude suffers from a very specific disease, and it's uh, the dude's a amazing survivor of it so i wore that shirt in um you know to be in support of him mikey uh i, I think sean works with him a few times a week uh he's a really good dude and it was very special for mikey to be able to actually attend the show because uh he you know it's just very tough with his health for him to get out and from his uh place of residence to absolutely come. yeah my heart's out to you mikey uh sean thank you for the uh the message i uh, i'm Really happy I got to see seeing that now because I don't really look at my phone. But I, I was kind of scrolling through Instagram to see what else is on your page here to like pull from. But man, <laughs> thank you again. And like I said, this isn't the last time. We'll definitely have you on again. There's the story, there's more story to be told. But uh thank you yeah. once again for coming, being episode six. So six episodes in the bag, two in one day. Was not expecting to be coming off a disgusting cold. But if you guys are here, if it's your first time uh, on YouTube, hit the like the subscribe. Um, I'm currently less than like eight away from hitting 300 subscribers on uh, YouTube. Uh, my goal for the end of the month, which ends tomorrow in two days is 300 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you guys can help out, that'd be great. Trying to hit 500 by the end of the year. So fingers crossed. Let's see how it goes. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And then the overall, like, like I said, it costs you nothing to subscribe. Uh, and then YouTube pays me every time you watch. So it, I'll just take some time out of your day and support people. Um, you Even on social media, people, they don't realize how, much if you like share and, and and just leave an engagement on a pay, page if uh, if someone who's a content creator gets enough of that they can get paid by that platform and it costs you nothing but it helps them so much it takes a second yep absolutely but uh vinny thank you once again for everything uh, i cannot wait to see you saturday my guy we will uh we will have some fun and i cannot wait to see who your match is going to be me either dude give me your ad I'll all right play. That'll do it for the ABJ podcast episode six. We will see you next week. Uh, we're out of here. Here's some Billy Trey. <laughs>